Good morning, Saints. I hope that you are well. I mean, can you believe it is Friday already? Um, you know, I praise God for the week. And, um, you know, I, I pray that as, uh, you know, we prepare to worship, that we will have a wonderful Sabbath together. Yes, I know we're apart in our homes, but, um, you know, God is good. You know, he's, I, I, I thank him for these wonderful social platforms that we are engaging on. And so let us pray at this time, shall we? Dear Father, thank you so much for your goodness and mercies towards us. Thank you for your great love, Lord, and, and for the way that, you know, you are just so present in our lives, for the way that you're taking this journey with us. We thank you for this, and we thank you for all that you are doing on our behalf. We love you, and thank you for your great love. And I pray that as we come to meditate upon your word, that you, your Holy Spirit will lead us into all truth and that you will speak to us. For we ask this in Jesus' holy and blessed name. Amen. Well, let's go back to our text, shall we? John chapter 14, verses 1 to 6. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I'm going in there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place that I'm going. And Thomas said, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Wonderful words of life and I thank God um, for the opportunity that he's given to us to consider um, you know what he means by by life and we've been um, carefully considering Genesis um, chapter 3 verses 14 and 15 in particular um, and that strike of the of the serpent there's so much more in the Bible that really Really does um, you know bring it to light um, you know so, so vividly um, but what we're gonna do we're gonna focus now on on um, what is stated in Genesis 3 about the, um, the, the woman's seed and how he would crush uh, the serpent um, in fact let me read that for us um, Genesis 3 verses 14 and 15 this is what it says so the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. And uh, it's stated very clearly there, that God states, he will crush your head. Now, we, we've considered the venom and that pain for strike um, of the serpent upon, um, you know, the, upon Christ. And, and also throughout the battle, you know, of how he gets to God by, by inflicting us with pain. And, and you know leading us into sin and uh, we, we've, we've caught uh, some insight of that in the experience of Cain and Abel and also in the um, in the experience of the flood yes and, and, and it's so sad um, when you consider that but the reality is that you know if God is at the center of your life um, we will be loving beings. We will be like him. We will be his very image. Um, and if it is that it's the um, serpent, um, you know, Satan who is navigating your steps, that will also be very, very clearly seen um, through the way that we live our lives, you know, the actions, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's just going to be so evident. And, um, you know, the Bible makes it clear that, you know, in our lives, the decisions that we make and our actions, um, in the end, they will be judged because they testify to identity as to who we really are and um, you know that's a theme that really builds really from, from from this very chapter in chapter three yeah but I'd like us to take a few moments to understand about this crush um, you know when the serpent is to be crushed um, that's speaking of obliteration yes um, that's speaking of victory over the evil one and I am thankful for that.
Um, yes, the battle is very involved, a very intense, and at times very painful. But God gives us the assurance in Genesis um, 3 verse 15 that the victory is assured. And, um, you know, I, I absolutely love John 3.16. It's the world's most favourite text. And um, let's say it together. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. What a wonderful gift. This is soteriology, the gift of salvation and, you know, that doctrine of, of how God seeks to deliver humanity. And it's, it, it, you know, you can be studying this um, and never exhaust it. It's just so involved and so amazing. Um, another text that um, seeks to illumine um, Genesis uh, 3 verse 15 is found in 1 John 4 um, verses 10 and also 13 to 18. Um, let me read this for you. This is what it says. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we ought to, ought to love one another. That's verse 11. And going across to verse 13, this is how we know that we live in him and he in us. He has given us his spirit and we have seen and testified that the father has sent his son to be the savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Christ is the son of God, um, God lives in them and they in God. And we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. This is how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. Um, there is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. Uh, the one who fears is not made perfect in love. This is a wonderful, wonderful text that really illuminates this wonderful gift of salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord, who sent to be our saviour, who um who comes and and bears the the you know the penalty of our sin, our guilt. You know, this is what we speak of when we when we when we talk of the innocent um dying for the guilty. God comes and he loves us and you know he sends his son in our stead because you know he wants to save us um, yes, the sin has got to be punished. And yes, we, we you know, as a human race, death is part of, of our existence. We lose our loved ones and we weep. Yeah? But we will not, um, you know, experience that eternal separation from God. Um, and this is what the plan of salvation is all about. But as John 3.16 states, God gives us the gift. He presents us with the gift. And it's up to us whether or not we will receive that gift. We can say, yes, we embrace you, or no, I'm okay, yeah? And that's the reality, and that's what is presented to us through the word of God. We can have life, we can experience salvation, but it's up to us to respond to God and this wonderful gift. Let us pray. Dear Father, we thank you so much for this wonderful plan of salvation, for your great love and for what you are doing for us as your children. Lord, forgive us where we have gone wrong and continue, Lord, that wonderful work that you are doing in our lives. I pray for each and every one of your children. I know that there are some of us who have not accepted you, dear Father, and I'm praying in a special way that today may be the day that each and every one opens their hearts 
hearts to you um, to embrace you and to embrace this wonderful plan that you have for each of our lives. Um, Lord, to give us liberty, to give us our freedom and to give us life abundantly. Oh Lord, we love you and thank you so much for everything. Thank you for your holy word and, and thank you for your Holy Spirit that leads us into truth. And Lord, we are coming to know you and to love you more and more each day. Bless us and keep us for our ask this in Jesus' holy and blessed name. Amen. Have a wonderful day, saints. God bless you.